What's up, everyone? Welcome to Mark's Place. So what do you want to do today, Mark? It's funny you ask. Today's the day we get around to installing this Predator 22 horse to a G16 golf cart. Sounds like a fun project. Yes, it does. All right, I disconnected the battery, all the cables, the hoses. Now I just got to disconnect the two shocks, the Panhard bar, and the Johnny joint I used for the factory mount in the front. It's in a previous video. Then I went ahead and I got one of these from Harbor Freight. Just like a little dolly type thing. And I'm gonna drop the front of the A-frame down on top of it. I'm just gonna wheel this all out over to here. That way I can work on it over here. All right, let's go, raise it up. Stop yelling at me. Well, I'll kick it down. Can't find good help anywhere. Of course, I'm always the one that has to do the dirty work. Now I got this tool, got it from Amazon, put a little oil on it. It's supposed to be the right one for this motor. I know when I bought an EasyGo one, they sent me the wrong one. I had to add a piece of bar to it. Make it longer, so hopefully we got the right one. All right, nice. Gotta disconnect this, which is the cable coming from the governor, right here. There it is. All right. It's just got a little clip on the back of here. Should be able to just pry that off without losing it. Should come off of here now. I sort of ran into a little dilemma here. I was gonna use the stock clutch that came with the cart. Unfortunately, if you look at the length of the shaft in the original motor to that of the 670, you'll notice the 670 is much longer. Now, I was under the assumption that I can use this spacer and this tapered piece that this clutch work on here. As you can see, it doesn't go on very far. So what I could do is cut the shaft back, re-drill it, re-tap it. Although I'm going to take a wild guess here and say that this came with the cart in 2001. So I went over to Vegas Carts and I ordered a new clutch and it should be here within about a week. All right, I'm just going to fire it up, let it run, make sure it's good. And then um, I'm going to go over all this because I'm not, uh, not too fond of anything that's going on here. Well, I like to choke. I like that part. That works good. The throttle, no. The whole spring of a jigger thing, I'm not, and it's not liking it. But um, I'm just going to want to see if it idles, how it runs, all that stuff. So we'll fill it up with oil. All right. Got a battery hooked up to it, it's full of oil, recommended amount. Uh, I got a gas hand rigged up to it. I just wanna see if this thing runs before I mess with anything. So let's see. On, put the choke on, start her up, let's see. Uh, I'm just letting it run out of gas. Moments later. What's going on, Mark? You look like you're in a deep thought. Uh, it looks like I gotta rebuild the whole frame. Oh, no, really? That stinks. One soggy week later. Well, this is what we got here, folks. If you look where the holes are for the motor and where they mount, 
They're right above this tube. So what I want to do is just eliminate this whole tube. I'll run a new one all the way over up here. That way it'll give me room for my motor to sit inside here better. And I'll save these two brackets, one on each side. All right, I stripped everything off the frame. Now what I'm gonna do, put a straight edge in the center of these holes. And I'm gonna measure from there to the very end of here. Which gives me 27 and 13 sixteenths. That way when I, um, when I go to put these brackets on the new frame that I make, I'll know how far, because this isn't gonna change. The distance from here to here will stay the same. All right, I got a jig, it represents a 90 degree angle. If you look, it's got a cut in it. That cut represents this part on the bender. So if I come over here, if I line this up where I want it, and then I would have transfer that over to here, and I measure from there over to the end, I can transfer that from here to here. I'll make it about an inch long, and then I'll cut off my piece here, and I'll make two of them. Got this piece off, which is the front piece. I made this, put this on last year. I'm gonna reuse that, the Johnny joint. And then I got these two brackets that were on the back. Um, all the nuts fell off, so I just retacked them and threw some self etching primer on her. All right, I got this mocked up where I want it. I got this measuring 16 and 3 eighths. The same thing over here. So now what I want to do is make a piece like they had back here to put in between here. Burnt madrilla. All right, I ended up making two of them of equal length. I got them all squared up. Got them all measured over to here. So I can put this on here. I measured from here over to here. Ends up being slightly under nine inches, which is which puts me right to my 16 3 eighths that I need from here to here. I'm just gonna cut these off and we'll tack this in. All right, it took a little while, but I got it all level, got it all square. I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna weld some of this up, some of that up, whatever I can get to. Then we'll take it back apart, weld it all up, put it back together, and then we'll try and place the motor in there, see where the motor mount's gonna go. All right, I got it all mocked up. This is pretty much when the motor's gonna sit. Now what you plan on doing is I'm gonna take this one inch piece out, replace it with one and three quarter, the same diameter as this tube. I'll run it all the way across from one side to the other. And then I'm gonna round this out so it fits right on the tube real nice. All right, I got the motor pretty much where it needs to be. You'll see in the back where the plate is sitting basically on the frame. Up here, I'm gonna cut this out and notch it because I got some quarter inch thick by three inch wide plate steel. I'm gonna cut that out to fit in here so it fits flush with the frame. All right, I got this piece welded in. I just wanna pick everybody up to speed and how I got to where I got. I'm gonna start off with this first. I'll put it on here. Zero it out. And then after I built this frame, 
I move this piece up and down until I got it pretty much right on zero. Regardless of how this frame was, because heat will move things. Same thing for the back. Oops. And we're, we're 0.1 degree off. Everything else is measured off of these two brackets. So you put a straight edge right here, and you measure from that bracket over, this is perpendicular to that and that. It's the same amount of distance on both. This, I did the exact same thing to this. I also did the exact same thing to this. How I actually got the measurements for, to get this thing square was I measured off the rim. I spun the rim and I checked for out of roundness. And then I measured off the rim to the bars all the way around until this was perfect. Okay, I went ahead and you've seen this earlier. I went ahead and notched this out. So this fits in here like this. I'm gonna drill two holes. I'm gonna bolt this down. I'm gonna build a little bracket to come off of here and put two bolts there. All right, I went ahead and I mounted the motor to the plate, making sure it's centered inside these slots. And then I got a string with a bob on the end and I tied a string over here, making sure it's in the center of the pulley. Coming over here, I eyeballed it and I kept moving the motor back and forth using a hammer and punch until this was centered here. Then I checked center here and down here. And I also put the square here, square with the pulley in the back, and I kept the distance between the square and this plate the same. All right, to get the distance from the motor to the rear pulley, I have about 13 and 3 eighths. All right, I just wanna elaborate on how I come up with the 10 and 3 eighths. As you can see in the video, I measured between the two shafts. I came up with 10 and 7 sixteenths. My original OEM belt was a 39 inch belt and I had purchased now a 45 inch belt, which is a difference of six inches. So if I stretch these two pulleys out, three inches top, three inches bottom, there's your six inches. So you add three inches on a 10 and 7 16 it's 13 and 7 16 The only difference is the OEM pulley was about, well the belt rides like this, was about an eighth inch smaller than the new pulley. Therefore, I had to move it over another sixteenth of an inch, subtract it in half, which gave me my thirteen and three eighths of an inch. All right, over many hours of going over this, I finally come up with a plan for the alternator. I'm gonna run another cross member across from one side to the other. I'm gonna build a plate that's gonna get bolted in the front and back, the way it can be removable. I got some half inch rod, solid rod, I'm gonna make basically a cage to go around it and that's what's gonna keep the alternator mounted. Well, as you can see, I hooked the motor up. Just wanted to check to make sure that the drive belt was actually running true and it was. Well, as you can see, I made this plate. Eventually I'm gonna put a couple bolts in here to hold this down so I can make it removable. But just for right now, I'm just gonna put a couple tacks in there just to hold it. All right, I'm gonna line this up. All right, I tighten the bolt up. We actually snug the belt up, which actually got a good tension on it. So we kind of know where we're supposed to be at. I'm just gonna make something like this and try and wrap over and back down. So I'm just gonna take the pen marker and mark this square like this. All right, let's go see how it fits. All right, so we'll take this, sit on here, make it somewhat flat right here. Maybe right about there. I'm gonna take this I'll make a line right around here. And I dust them off. I haven't used them in a while. Mm. 
Whoopa, whoopa, whoopity doo. I'm gonna bend some metal for you. In here? It's not gonna look too bad, huh? All right, I'll cut this other side and, uh, yeah, we'll get there. We'll, we'll figure it out. All right, I got this on here like this. It's gonna look something like that. All right, and I got another piece. It's gonna go basically straight up and down. And then I'll bend it to go this way and down this way. All right, I built the other bracket. I tack weld them together. I got it level with this plate over here. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna build a tab coming down here. I'm gonna shorten this and drill a hole in it and I'll hold the top of the alternator. It's from a small block Chevy bracket. And I made sure that I left enough room to get the belt in and out. I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna tack it up. I love these templates. I'm off Amazon with a whole set of them. All right, it's gonna drill some holes through here. Just found center. Draw me a line. All right, as far as the frame goes, it's the last piece of the puzzle. I'm gonna get a piece of one inch round tubing and I'm gonna run it all the way across here. I'll cut this back, put a couple tabs on it just to keep this supported. So what I wanna do right now, is I'm gonna measure from center to center, which is roughly about 18 and an eighth inches. I'll write that down. Then we'll take a ruler. And we're gonna come down one inch, which is roughly about the center of the tube. So if I measure from the center of the tube, the center of the tube will give me my, my dimensions, which we already know, 16 and 3 eighths, which is 16 and 3 eighths. So we'll go make that, and we'll be right back. Center this like that. Uh, six and a sixteenth. It's gonna tack this in, and I'll put a couple taps under here, drill some holes, and then we can get that plate off, and we'll finish this. All right, there was a little bracket that came on the factory frame. It was actually just there to hold the brake cable. So, cut it off of there. I'm just gonna tack it onto here. All right, what I got left now, I gotta cut some round circles here and here. So it fits down in there.
All right, it is a new day. We need to finish this up and get it off to the campground where it belongs for the season. As you can see, I made new shock mounts. I originally had them here, so I didn't have beefy enough shocks that can handle the extra load. But when you tip a set of shocks, you'll get a smoother, better handling ride, but at the same time, you need a beefier shock. Well, I acquired a good set of shocks. They're 12 millimeter springs. The OEM ones are nine millimeter. And this is about how they located they're in stock. Well now, the new mounts, they'll be out like this. All right, next agenda on the list is to do something with the exhaust system. You'll notice that the muffler that came with the engine exits out the front, but we need it to exit out the back. It's for a campground, so I want this thing to be as quiet as possible. The reason for the big motor, there's a few big hills there. So what we need to do is flip the muffler over and have it face out the back. All right, I'm just gonna buzz the heat shield off. We'll put it back on when we're done. Gonna tack it like this. All right, now that it's still really hot, I tighten it to the motor, nice and tight. That way, when it cools off, it doesn't do something weird on me. All right, now I got these two brackets I gotta put on, which go in these two little bowl holes right here. This one goes here. And I'm gonna line it up and mark it, clean it up. Same thing for this side. Take the exhaust system off, clean it up, put it back. I'm gonna hold it up in the air just a little bit when I tack it. That way it's nice and snug against it. And looking good, Robin Hood. All right, I just wanna make sure the shield still fits on here. When I'm all done, I'll get some high temp paint and I'll paint the whole thing. The holes went on top, like this. Be a little close. Let me put a bolt in there. Should be, oh, they line up. Good. Look at that. So apparently you can put this cover on upside down. All right, well, it's a little close right here. Yeah, I'm just saying close, but it's it's not touchy, but so I'm just gonna um, I'll just grind a little off here. Like that. And like this. Oh yeah, look at that. Beautiful thing. All right, I got the golf cart on the ground, resting on the shocks. I got the old Panhard bar I had to cut off. I'm gonna be building a new one, but for now, I'm just gonna put it on here, and I'm gonna tack it. Then I'm gonna take the shocks off and drop the whole cart by around two inches, which is roughly when the suspension is fully compressed. That way it'll give me an idea of where to put my mufflers without interfering with either the cart itself or the Panhard bar. All right, I set it up as if the suspension is fully compressed. I figure out where I put my mufflers. Kind of like I'm right around here. So I'll go to the center of there, to the top of this pipe, and we're looking at around five inches. Try this side. Let's see, we'll go up five inches. We'll put that in the center, and that will get you right around here. All right, we're gonna make our TY pipe right now. What I did is I squared this up with this. Put this on here. Measured over, 
roughly about five eighths. Got a laser beam. And now I can draw my line where I want to cut. I'll mark it here on the back. Flip it over. Follow this line to this line. What it is, I'm going to cut two of them like this, mend them together, and I'll have two pipes come out the back. All right, I have a little mock-up of everything. This represents the axle. This represents the tubes right here and here. The muffler is actually going to start right here and come off, which would be right here. What these are right here, what I'm making is they go here and here like that. Let's straighten these out a little bit, which means that when this line right here, I need roughly one and a quarter inches. Now this is, this represents the muffler, which I'm gonna run a couple of Y45s off because this is gonna, the muffler sits a little higher than these pipes. And right here, you, you need roughly about one and a quarter inches, which if we look, we're right around one and a quarter. So I wanna actually line this up perfect. And I'm gonna mark this in here to let me know where I need to be. All right, I got a square lined up, 19 inches on center. I'll take a piece, I'll put it on here. Make sure it's in the middle. Then I'll mark it here and here, do the same thing over here. Making sure that I get my 18 inches on center that I needed from here to here. All right, I didn't record a lot of this because it's kind of a confined area. It's kind of hard to get in here in the first place. But um, this is kind of where we were at right now. This is gonna go like this. This one's gonna go over here like this. And then I'm gonna make pieces of rods coming down. I'm gonna wall them onto here and then make them detachable on the bottom. Hey, you in here? Hey, what's up, buddy? I'm gonna see how far along you got with the golf cart, man. Camp's been open for a month now. Yeah, it's a little slow process, but I'm getting there. Frank stopped over to help me out with the exhaust system. Oh, really? How's he doing? Hey, he's doing good, man. Yeah, you know how he is. He's always on the go. Let me see what you got here. Wow, nice job, man. Yeah, I'm in the middle of doing the Panhard bar right now. Yeah, I got it all drawn up right here. Just gonna cut this out. Weld this up over here. I think I'm gonna have to use this factory piece right here. I'll just round off the edges. I'll put that back on there. All right, I got my brackets all made up. I got this one propped up. I got this one made up. Just gonna tack it up for now. All right, I set up two bobs to center of the machine. Down here. I got these both on. I'm just gonna measure from here to here to give me 18 and 7 eighths. Yeah, this thing's a game changer. 
telling anybody that works on tubes or pipe, you got to get one of these. Changes everything. I just recently got this. Wow. This cleans it right up nice. All right, we're finally on to the painting. Yes. All right. So, what I always do is I'll take a scrubby pad, clean everything up real good, best I could, and I go through with some acetone. Clean everything with acetone. Try not to touch it too much. And considering that it's all bare metal, use a, some self etching primer and then whatever color paint you want to put on top. This is what I had in the cabinet. And as far as the header goes, I got some. 2,000 degree high temperature primer and 2,000 degree high temperature paint. So, I'll clean this all up, get it all painted, and get it back together. All right, seeing that I flipped the muffler around the other way, my understanding is there's two different size jets in here, 105 and a 108. We're just actually gonna swap them. I added more back pressures to the system, which will cause it to run on the rich side, so we might be good. Let's see, we'll get this out of the way. All right, that one just basically flips over. You can pull that rod off. This one just lifts up in the air like that. Oh, there's only brass in there. Be careful. All right, let's see how this comes up. Two regular screws. All right, we'll take these off. They're eight mils. There we go. Screwdriver. Got the long one. You really need a long one, but oh well. That's it. That one here. Okay. All right, that part's done. Put this back. Yeah, I'm gonna run it for a little while and. I don't want to be opening the jet up and finding out I'm too big. Okay. All right, we're going to strip the wires off this thing. This thing the motor basically only has five wires on it. We've got a green and yellow wire, which comes off for the solenoid for anti back flare, which we're going to hook that up. And that would be these two right here. Okay. And then you got a low oil, which is this yellow wire. And you got your two uh, from your coil pack. Go to the regulator, so we're not going to use that. So we have a different alternator. Um, the golf cart has a uh, low oil light on the dashboard that go that's always fed. It comes back to a low oil switch. It does not kill the engine or nothing. So I'm going to hook that up. They don't give you nowhere to hold it. It's horrible. That's eventually just going to go right to my battery. Just like on a car. What it is, you got two blue wires coming in. You got AC created at the, behind the flywheel. And that sends down the two blue wires, usually around 30 volts. And then it'll knock it down to 12 volts, DC. And that's what this wire would be. But we're not gonna use this. Get that right out of there. Get this out of here. Okay, right over here. We're not using this. So this is our kill switch. Basically, you just ground this out and you killed it. 
Put all this back together. Get it in the cart. Because Mama, she wants her golf cart. She wants to go camping. We missed a couple nights already, that's all. It's been really, 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 really bad out. Like, it hasn't been nice at all. So we didn't really miss much. All in all, we probably missed two, maybe three nights camping. That's it. Unless you want to go out there and freeze your butt off. Which, and now, not for enough that I really sit in my barn. Okay. We'll get the throttle cables on disconnected and uh, we'll get it in the cart and we'll rewire when we get in there. I just want to say I took the green wire and used that bolt that we took off before, that little relay. I'm going to use this bolt for here. And that's going to be my ground. I'll put that back. I'll put my ground from here to the body and to the battery. All right, I got the motor all back in there. I did take it for a little test ride. I was gonna do a video on, on doing electrical. That would've been a whole video in itself. I do have a fuse box that's going to go in like this. All right, I was gonna use the governor on the cart but it just turned out to be way too difficult. So I actually used a big heavy duty spring right here. It's sort of like a bed spring. And then I just gotta replace this spring again. But um, I'm gonna get a different one. This is just a cable I got from Amazon that I had, and it's just kind of stuck in here right now. So what I'm gonna do is I got the cable that's actually for the cart, and then I'm just gonna realign inside that cable. I drilled that out with a 1564 bit. And then I had to re like file the center because it's a little big, but she's in there now. She's moving nice. I'm just going to take this over here. Over here. Because this cable is way too long, anyways. I'm just going to snip it. Like that. And I can pull all that off. All right, now I can take this off. Pull the center out. Put that center in there. And that should do it. Fish that through here. Should see it come out over here. There it is. It's even moving. Just fish that in there. Tighten it up. There you go. Give it a little snugness and I'll tighten that up. And that should do the throttle. I got two new brake cables coming in too, because I don't, probably original to the cart. That's pretty much where I stand right now. Take you for a little ride once I get it all going. Dogs are barking. Mm -hmm. Always. All right, I ended up running with the stock uh, fuel pump that was on the cart. Seems to be working all right, but the lines weren't quite long enough. So I got some new lines. Kind of need them anyways, the other ones are a few years old. This is one all new line here. It's in here. All right. I believe I'm putting this on here, right? I don't know, it's been a while since I took this thing apart. There, I got two Phillips screws here. It, um, she drove really nice. I'm really shocked. I've heard of horror stories. And I'm due for an oil change. 
I went and got some pipe to extend it out. I wish I would have did that before I put it in the cart. I already had the oil in there. It's going to be kind of a pain to change the oil right now. All right, this motor is ice cold. See? Ice cold. Watch this, no choke. Nope. Yeah. 